Burn the cigarette down to the filter. No more drops left in the bottle on the floor. Stare into the shadow frame of your picture. You're so gone. To the deserted island, border so fine, dancing in the sand, kissing on your tattoo. On your tattoo. Radio, we're talking hip hop news with the one and the only Joe Boy from California, Mr. Devin. How are you today? I'm doing good, man. I'm, I'm honored to be here, man. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like when I'm every time I'm around mimics. I like the vibes. I like the energy. I'm just happy to be here, man. Oh, man, that's awesome to hear. I appreciate that. Uh, listen, Mr. Joe Boy, you got some fire music that we're going to play today on our radio. Real quick, uh, just for YouTube mentions, do we have permission to play your music? Of course. Of All course. right. That is awesome. What did you do today? Uh, man, I've been at work, man. Just uh, I actually recorded my Devin's Downtime. It's actually a... a a channel or a playlist of mine to where I just talk about funny stories that happened in my life and try to give you something to listen and laugh upon. Um, I uploaded my music to Distro Kids so that can come out on Friday and uh, just went and sat down and figure out what song I could release for tomorrow for my way back Wednesday. Just trying to get all the content together. Okay, I, I, I got it. I got it. So what's your uh, what's your Monday through Friday uh, titles? So we had way back Wednesday. What's your Monday through Friday titles? Monday, I try to do Devin's downtime. I've been kind of uh, slacking to where I've been doing it on Tuesday just because I've been at home and I've been kind of lazy, just pure laziness. Usually when I get to the office and I have downtime is when I do the downtime. Um, Wednesdays is way back Wednesday. Um, I'm in my 30s now, so it's all the music that I made like when I was 16 on like shitty computers and shit like that that people have been asking for that have already been put out. Um, but I can't I put on social shit because it has other, it's all freestyles and shit like that. Right, and then, uh, right. I hear you. Friday is just all new music. Friday is just whatever I have in the vault that I just want to release to the public. And we've been putting out music every Friday since December 6th. Oh, wow. And when you say we, who is we? Um, Just really, I, I mean, me is, me and the Dro Boys, just really me, just taking it upon myself, but I always include my team whenever I'm whenever I'm speaking about us, you know. Okay, okay. And I have one last question before you play your latest album on uh on YouTube. What what do you do for a living? Um right now I'm actually in um in real estate. So I come in when the salesmen are actually off and I bar the model house and I take in all of the clients that, that come in and try to get them to buy a house or build a house, one of the two. Okay. Okay. No, that's a that's a pretty good industry to be in. I am the guy who builds the houses. That's awesome, though. Construction manager. Hello. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> you know it. No, no. I'm the I'm the contractor. I don't. Well, oh. I don't work for um, general contractors here in North Carolina uh, because they try to charge the customer more than what I'm actually going to charge. So we don't we don't really work for them. Um, and we don't work for managers or like big businesses. We only work for the homeowner. What we do is we go in there, we tell the homeowner exactly what we're going to do. I'm actually about to start a project up here uh, in North Carolina. It's about an hour and a uh, half away from me. It's uh, towards the beach. Thank goodness. Oh, yeah. And um, she did not want a general contractor because they have like a such a they have a, a reputation, but they their main reputation is for taking money. Um, but yeah, so stuff is going good with that. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that we are kind of in the same industry, homes and houses, building better lives for people. Uh, yes, you know, sir. Building somebody somewhere that can live a better life, but I am also I'm someone in in a similar, not the same, but a similar industry is also trying to push out their music career. Yeah, what yeah. inspired you to do music, Mister Mister Joe Boy Devin? Um, I mean, it started a while ago. My dad was actually a rapper. Um, he was okay. one of the first um, artist to sign to a, a first group to sign to a major label on the West Coast. He was part of a group called Seven Eighty Three. 
that consisted of him, his brother, and a DJ you guys might know called DJ Muggs, who is now in Cypress Hill. Okay. Um, so they had a group. They were doing their thing. Um, my dad decided to kind of just split away from the group because he didn't like the way music was going. As far as um, from what I've been told, my dad was offered to make the Cypress Hill album. My dad didn't want to make the Cypress Hill album. He's from Brooklyn, New York. He felt it would have had a very negative impact on his on his uh, his home living and stuff like that, living in the projects and stuff like that. So didn't want to talk about weed and how I could just kill a man. Um, but he did right. write um, sawed off shotgun, hand on a pump, smoking on a four or sipping on a 40, smoking on a blunt. My pops wrote that. Okay. So okay. when I was younger, I'd be going into different offices and stuff like that, and I'd be hearing different raps, and I'd be like, man, I'll, I'll fuck that dude up. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. um, so that's kind of how it went, just uh, growing up kind of with it in my blood. Uh, my, my, my grandfather on my wife's side is actually a musician. He's still doing a show every Sunday just in front of his house, man, just in front of his house playing his little banjo and stuff like that. Um, my, my dad, my grandfather on my black side, he played the xylophone. We had like xylophone, big gold xylophone growing up. So I, I just kind of say music is in my blood, man. All right, man. No, that's, that's pretty awesome to hear. I like that. I'm, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get a couple of viewers over here. It's okay. If we don't have viewers right now, we can have viewers oh, yeah. later on. I'm sure uh, if you, are, if you are viewing. Let us, let us know about your opinions about any of the topics. Today's topics pretty much are going to be uh uh joe boy uh his inspirations what got him into music we're gonna also gonna we're gonna talk hip-hop news currently the biggest thing right now is the game dissing eminem and what is eminem gonna come back with uh but we are also here to mainly talk about joe boy and his music and we are actually about to play in about five minutes his newest album on youtube it's in the description if you want to go follow joe boy because he has some great music and what did you say about you have some new upcoming music coming out on Friday? Yeah, man. Every Friday we drop a new tunes. Every, every Friday. So if you go back on the Fridays, of, they're actually not on the YouTube channel. I started off just putting them out on all the streaming platforms. But then I wanted to run it into YouTube so that way I can monetize it myself and see how much actually people are viewing it and commenting and so on and so forth. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. <clears throat> what are you doing to try to stand out from the other artists, independent artists today? Um, I think it's just uh, as far from me. I think it's um, my substance, um, my cadences. Um, I think my substance is very different. Um, me being 30 years old and rapping since I was 16, I've, I've said a lot of shit. I've said a lot of stuff, um, and I don't like being repetitive. I, I've never been the dude to write a track and and use it on the same beat or a different beat or anything like that. So I think it's the substance. My substance that I want to do right now or what I've been focusing on, aside from Players Club time, because I, I have a little bit of everything, but I think it, what I call it is grown hop. I, I try to... I try to make it to where the, uh, us 30 and over, people in their 40s and 50s can hear some shit and enjoy hip hop again without it having to be killing and bitches. And I got the newest car and I got the newest weed and shit like that. I try to make it to where it relates to every human being. Okay, that's respect. That, that's respectable. What, um, before I play your first album, uh, you know what? No, you know what? Let's, let's give everybody who's watching right now, let's give your first album. Um, I don't know how well, to first mute album you. Uh, no, the first song. The, um, yeah, I was about to say the first song, the first album. You have to go back. I mean, my first album is, by the way, my name is CA. We recorded that in Brooklyn in 2009. Okay, okay. I didn't mean the first album. I meant like the first song on your YouTube, the, uh, the, the Players, Players Club. Club All right, so Players we're about Club. to play Players Club by uh, Drew Boy CA on mimics rio and also if you'd like to if you like this song definitely go follow him uh when we come back we're definitely about to talk about some hip-hop news and everything going on i want to hear his opinion about the game also mr joe boy i do not know how to mute you on here when your song is playing mute yourself please and uh let's Yeah. Fade on the 
that Perry and shit loud. We trying to make you dance. Look, look. I never felt belly. I put my cheese, you tell me. Yeah, yeah. Money makes the world move. And sex does too. It is no high sky. I feel like. Hold on. Okay, that's my fault. I I don't know what's going on. I really, I don't know what's going on. It's popping up right now. It says, are you experiencing interruptions? Yes, I am. This hasn't happened before. Let's try it one more time. I think it was because I was trying to shoot a live video with Instagram. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Fade on the track, per you We trying to make you dance to this one. You can sell me, yeah, yeah. Money makes the world move, and sex does too. It is so high in the sky, I feel like I am up on the moon. She get the bus and I get it. The fourth of July is the middle of June, baby. You so damn cute. Can I get your number? She says she would. Well, I got that wood. Come and get this number. Get in head in a Hummer. Let me know she's a freaky girl. Told her she can follow me, but don't ever ever tweet me, girl. Let's get drinks and meet these girls Smell good while I greet these girls I'm married so I tease these girls But my friends are single Got money so they mingle Loyal to the game and never had to use a cheat code Vibe check on a hunter Hot as a damn summer I ain't worried about the energy I don't need nothing from ya As long as you down the ride Baby here yeah, you are mine So damn fine Players club time Shake it like she trying to make her ex jealous Not a hood rat and never been a title teller After bills, 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 that's our destiny While I try to put my letter P on your letter P Baby, this a legacy, your legs on my shoulders Come over here to come over here, Red Rover, Red Rover We like getting lit, 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 don't like me Rather go hard than go steady, yeah, yeah Give me that wop for the Fetty Reminiscing over Remy, yeah, yeah I put it all in her belly Don't stop is what she tell me, yeah, yeah I need that price like I'm Kelly Me for the cheese like a deli, yeah Vibe check on a hunter Hot as a damn summer I ain't worried about the energy I don't need nothing from ya As long as you done a right Baby, yeah, you are mine So damn fine Players club time Yeah, boy. Shout out my boy Jay Caviot on that one, man. He laced out. Okay. Okay. No, I, I like that. I like that record. I'm sorry that it was uh, messing up. Hold on. Sorry, it was like it felt like a Jamaican song to me. It just kept pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. You feel me? That's all. Okay. 
Hey, Jay Jimerson, welcome over. We are talking with Dro Boy with this interview. We're talking about him, his life, his music inspirations. We're also going to talk some hip hop news, talking about this uh, this new craze going on with the game versus Eminem. Ebony, I'm sure, is about to hop up in here. She's going to give her opinion on this too. Um, but we are playing pretty much Dro Boy CA, all of his music right now, today, until he has to go. Um, the last time I did this, though, uh, when the uh, when the last person left, I started playing like some random YouTube music. I thought because it was on YouTube and I'm on YouTube, they would combine. No, I got hit with that copyright. Um, so they took it off. So I definitely have to do uh, GMR one more time. But uh, Mr. Devin, uh, let's talk about your YouTube podcast that's coming up and your new album that's about to drop. What you have, what you got. Tell everybody. Well, first of all, shout out Jay Jamerson in the building, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm in H-Town right now. I live in H-Town, so Texas definitely in the building. Um, as far as what's going on with the music, man, it's just, it's, I just stay fresh, man, um, with all humbleness. Um, I, I, like I said, since December 6th, we've been putting out a record every Friday. Um, I'm not too hot at um, promoting records. I'm an artist. Um, what I do is I'll send them out through YouTubes and send them out through the Instagram. But as far as like promotion and stuff like that, I've been doing that my whole career, which is why I'm not more established. I personally feel, but, um, yeah, so this, this, uh, this coming Friday, we're going to release, it's called, uh, J A F A, which stands for just a fuck around. And it's, uh, basically just a beat on some, uh, with some auto tune in it. And uh, just something I had laying around the vault that I really like. Um, I think my first line is um, something about I'm a king like Jamie Foxx when he was chasing fancy. Because instead of Jamie Foxx, it was Jamie King. You know what I'm saying? So just some fun in there. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you a question, a question that I'm sure that all of the other independent artists would like an answer to because <clears throat> I know the answer to my personals. So you are a realtor. Are you having to use your current nine to five job to fund and pay for your music? Um, I did. I will say I did. Um, luckily for myself, I invested in um in in my I, I make the music myself, man. Um I, I really don't have anybody to mix and master it. Um, thank you to Mimics that did get our, our track that we did together, mix and mastered. Um, I pretty much do everything myself. Like the last record that we just played, I mixed and mastered myself just from the kitchen. Um, you know what okay. I mean? I used to invest a lot into it, but once I invested into the plugins and the software and the mic and stuff like that, I was like, man, I've been doing this for too long and not seeing um, residuals back on all the music I've been making, on all the lyrics I've written, on all the hooks I've done, on all the studio time that we booked. I'm not seeing residuals as fast as I would see if I was a fucking sandwich maker or a bricklayer or a roofer or anything of that nature. So right. I just took it on myself to just be like, you know what, I need to figure out a way to where I don't need to spend money and still have it come back. Because I think in today's time, with everybody making so much music, um, it's always best to have it mastered. But the more you could teach yourself and get the ability to do it yourself, the less you need to focus on others in a bigger role that you play as far as a musical instrument. Like for the simple fact that you could send me a beat and I can knock it out as soon as I get it and send it back to you um, with a clean with a clean mix. Not, not necessarily mix, but naked and everything. And then we go to mix from there. That's a right. lot of it's a strong um attribute to have for an artist right right i no, i definitely 100 percent understand that so what are you using right now to fund have you have you made any type of funds off of your music um nah man like i've been doing it for years like i'm, I'm on ascap i'm on bmi I've, I've sold cds and stuff like that like when back when we had physical copies i remember when i had my cd i had a barcode and stuff like that and motherfuckers was mind blown um, that oh, yeah. my CD, we had its own barcode. Um, but nah, man, like I don't, I, it, it's hard for me. Like I have a deep understanding of music and a different understanding of music as far as like um, the entertainment industry and certain things that they call the Illuminati and, and the enlightened and things of that nature as to, I don't necessarily want to, I don't want to go looking for the big labels. I want the big labels come looking for me. 
Because oh, that's a that's a really good point. That's like my grandfather used to say. They said he said that uh, if they come looking for you and they make you pay money, that means they want to make, make money off of your music. But if they come looking for you and they pay you money, that means that you. He he told me he said that means you've made it. You're there. You're done. Yeah, yeah. And that's basically my focus, man. Is just to keep, um, like I said, the the whole mind state of putting out stuff every Friday is just to show the consistency. Um, don't know who's looking, right. don't know who's not looking. What I can say is that one of my records that I put out, Jimmy Cook's Drake song has a part of a song that I put out. Now, did he get that okay. from me? I don't know. Did did I take it as a respectful gesture to me and make it feel like I'm doing something right? Yeah. I had a song talking okay. about my day ones that passed away and then Drake uses the same song that says, gotta throw a party for my day ones. So for me, it's just it's just keeping it going and just waiting. Not necessarily, I mean, you they say don't wait, but it just depends on what you want. I'm not, I'd rather raise my family and things like that because as soon as I get into the industry, the industry is gonna try to tarnish my family. The industry is gonna try to bring me down. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'd rather be established as a human being before I try to go be established as a fabricated entity to make money. Right. Well, just, just exactly what you're going off of right now. That was one thing that I had an issue with Joe, with not Joe boy, you are Joe boy with, uh, with the game. So the game decided that he wanted to go on a talk show. I don't know the talk show, but he decided he wanted to go on there and say that, you know, I thought Eminem was better than me. And then all of a sudden he comes out with this rap song uh, calling himself the Black Slim Shady. The only reason that I had an issue with that was because he called Eminem out, but then also in the rap, he decided that he wanted to talk about his daughter, his family. He literally mentioned that he talked about his daughter. He talked about his mama. He talked about his brother, who his half-brother who passed away. That's why Eminem was raising his nieces. Wrong. He raised two of his nieces. Yeah, so what do you think about that it, with, with what you just said about you don't want your, your family in that involvement? What do you think about the game calling out somebody and then mentioning that somebody's family? Okay, I want to say this first. I want to say my little disclaimer. Game, if we do a record together, great. I love to do a record with you and go back and forth and do a record. So I'm going to say that first and fourth. Man. Um, but in saying that, I wasn't a big fan of Drillmatic, the whole record all around. Um, okay. The Black Slim Shady, I think the, I want to say that the the blog that you're talking about or the vlog is, um he was on Drink Champs, I want to say. And he was saying to people okay. that he feels he's better than Eminem. And that, you know, he used to think Eminem was better than him until he figured that he was better than Eminem. And um, the only person that really had that argument to me that was legit was Gucci. And Gucci said that years ago when they made that uh, MTV top 10 list. And G Gucci just simply said, my people in my area of Atlanta are not riding around listening to Eminem. Makes sense. But as far as for game, it just seems like to me, it seems bitter. Um, I think he still heard about that Super Bowl halftime show that he was not part of um right and you I know his, his, is as far as his career it hasn't blossomed like anybody that's came before him or at, after him in dre and i think that's what he's bitter about and that's what he's trying to show and one of my boys profane he's a battle rapper and what he told me was that you know he he's cool with snoop he can't go at snoop he can't go at dre because dre made him he can't go at kendrick because that's confident so who do you go out as game? You go at the white boy. But that's not right. the white boy you fuck with at all. Right. And and I have to go, I have to go on that. Uh one of the comments that I made in the plan A Facebook was I was it, it was in the same comment with this uh with the game was um 50 Cent. 50 Cent's gotta be probably one of my uh favorite rappers but in every single interview that i watch him in they're always talking about eminem being the goat i want to hear about 50 cent this dude got shot like six seven times he has a, a bullet in his tongue one of the interviews he laid a napkin over his tongue so a woman could still feel the bullet in his tongue and like just because eminem is a goat and he's great and like he came in i feel like honestly Okay, so he was one of the greatest rappers, and he's white, so who cares? But I want to hear about 50 Cent. Like, 
in an interview with 50 Cent. If I wanted to listen to an interview about Eminem, I would hop over and watch it on YouTube, watch a, a, a interview with Eminem. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have to give respect to the game for trying to push better because we have to we have to be we have to talk about the future. Uh, Dr. Dre is getting super old. Eminem is getting super old. Uh, you know, all of these Snoop Dogg, he's making cookies with Martha Stewart now. I mean, all of these people are getting super old, so we have to look at the future. And the game is looking at, I, I feel like he's trying to pull back the past about like, oh, I'm better than Eminem. Like, okay, but Eminem really hasn't put out a record in what, like five years, four years? I don't know. I it's haven't, not, I haven't it's heard probably anything. Been, it's, probably been about, it's probably been about two years at the most. It's probably been a year. His last, his last one was uh, "Music to Be Murdered To" part, part two. But in that, like, Eminem, what it simply is to me, hands down, is that the game's bitter. Game is not at a Fifty Cent level. Game's not at an Eminem level. Game's not at a Dre level. Um, and he feels some type of way about that. But what a lot of people forget is that he fucked that, that up. In you what way? What huh? In what way? What do you mean? I mean, there's two ways. For one, you could say when he left G Unit was probably the first time this when he fucked it up. When he got kicked right. out of G Unit, that was that was a done data. I would say the second time is when he fucked it up, is when he looking outside of music is when he lost that lawsuit to that woman and owed her millions of dollars, never wanted to pay her, and now everything that you make, brother, is going to that woman. That's why we haven't heard from game in his consistently consistency for so long because he's had to pay this woman every dime he gets right okay i can understand that so so you're saying that um he owes this woman money and now i feel like he's calling out one of the biggest rappers just to try to gain traction on his records just so he can pay back his alimony bullshit and it's I not even you. alimony he went he had a ray j of love called the game of love he 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 got sued for mis sexual conduct he lost because the dumbass, I'm sorry, I don't know him. The unsmart man didn't show up to court and, and he simply lost because he didn't show up to court. So then he owed this woman millions and kept not paying her and not paying her till his publishing was going to her, till his companies were going to her and everything liquefied to her. Oh, wow. I did not know that about him. See, I don't, I, I'll be honest with you, 100%. Um, Never even heard his name until he started popping off about Eminem on a on a on a talk show. Honestly, I've never even heard of the dude. So I looked him up. He's got eleven studio albums. Never heard the man. He's got like over thirty singles. He's got two under under uh the um the underrated albums. Like I've never heard of the dude. And that's that's look what trust the shooter just said because I went over with my homie. Trust the shooter just said. Have you seen all the features on that album? He's swinging for the fence on everything. Now, if you take the game's albums and you go back minutes and you look on your computer, all his albums look like fucking DJ Khaled albums. This motherfucker will have three uh, artists on one song for four different songs. And, right. I, and I went back and looked at it. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the growth that I feel he hasn't had. But um, so when, Again, I've never heard of the game, but I've, I've heard that Eminem was actually, or he, Eminem was on one of his songs. Am I yeah. wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got they they got at least one record together. Yeah, yeah. It's um it's off his first album called the uh, documentary. I'm pretty sure you've heard a, a song by Game. You probably just didn't know it was Game. If you've heard Hate It or Love It, The Underdogs on Top, that's the game. Right. See, my my problem is I don't know the names of the artists and yeah. I don't know I don't know the names of the songs. But like, if I hear something, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I love that. That's just like the astronauts. I don't know who that's by. Uh, the one that goes, uh, what you know about rolling oh, down okay. in the deep when you bring go. No, like, I love that song. Have no idea who it's by. Nope. Um, pretty sure when I typed it in the first time on YouTube, I said astronaut. Like, that's not the title. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know all of that information. I don't even but, know what an astronaut in the ocean feels like. <laughs> <laughs> me either, but he made me feel like I knew it. So that's why right. I love that book. But uh hey, uh Mr. Joe Boy and everybody listening to uh Mimics Radio.
Radio with Hip Hop News with Joe Boy CA. We're about to jump into another Joe Boy song here on YouTube. You should definitely go and subscribe. His information is in my two in the description on YouTube. We're gonna listen to Cookie Crumble by Joe Boy, produced by Fade on the Track. Here we go, Mimics Radio. <laughs> That made them crumb from what's that? Fade on the track. Okay. I see where you at, man. I see where you at. I think the I think the people in the comments in the chat, I think they enjoyed that. Oh, we're gonna keep we you're gonna get a lot more views on this because we're gonna keep shutting this out once we once we finish it. I was saying it about, but I felt like I was being rude, not focusing on the interview. So I'm like, let me focus on this and we'll get it out and we'll get some more views after. Oh, no, man, you're good. Listen, I, I prefer that uh, the people listening to the music and, and hearing our conversation because we're talking hip-hop news and the latest yep. going on. Uh, you know, if if you want to if you wanna drop on some, some sharing out, that's what I was doing during the song. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely fine with me. Uh, but we are definitely, this entire, this entire session is all about Joe Boy C.A., uh, with some some hip hop news, and I'm loving your advice. Uh, you you seem very intelligent. I know you are intelligent because you are a realtor. Uh, if anybody needs to buy a house in Texas, hit up Joe Boy. I'm sure he has a card somewhere. <clears throat> but uh, no, I heard your music on Plan A Radio. On the couch, don't nobody know your music. These bars are passing them by. You keep procrastinating over and over. Maybe I'll drop next week. Maybe I'll drop next month. No, do it right now. They'll listen to you after work, before work. Plan A Radio can help you get heard. Go talk to DJ Show. He's out to help you. You spend all day on YouTube anyway. Why don't you send your music to somebody that's going to get you heard? All you got to do is tune in and spread the word. That's a bore. That's a bore. Why make it complicated? It's easy. DJ Show. Plan A Radio. Shit, that was a part too. If you want to get your music heard, then plan on listening to Plan A Radio, DJ Show. For more information, hit 310-832. You bitch, you. Yo, hosted by the real DJ Show. Mm -hmm. uh, Plan A Radio, Ebony, if you can please tag that in the comments so everybody can go there and subscribe for actual music reviews. This is not a music review. This is a definite interview with the real, the one, the only, the never can be anybody else, Joe Boy C.A. And it is definitely well worth every penny. Absolutely. 
a hundred percent right there with you. So what do you uh what do you have? So you said how long have you been trying to do music in this industry? Like how long since when you first like went into a music studio? I understand people can write songs down. Mm -hmm. When you first walk into a music studio, how long has that been? I think my first real one that was like million dollar studio or at least a couple hundred thousand was i think at 16. and um it was like my 16th birthday gift from like my dad he took me to the studio and it was all soundproof all like the top stuff and i recorded a song um i forgot what it was called it was some female joint i used to be all over the females man i was a little pretty ricky Right. <laughs> I'm gonna eat your pussy from the back and have my tongue come out your throat type shit. Yeah, I was yeah. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. 16, right, 16. So, but, but but how long ago was that though? Um shit, 17 years. Okay, so my next question on that was so you said that uh, you've had some trouble like pushing out your music or, or anything. Do you have any advice? So you've been trying to do this for 17 years. Do you have mm -hmm. any advice for these uh, new kids, like 15, 16, going in? Let's just go with 25 people who are just now trying to do music. Do you have any advice on people trying to do music right now? What would you give them like not to do and what to do? Um, That's a very good question. Um, I think what not to do is – one of the things, uh, there's, there's a lot of answers I have to this. Um, first thing what I would do is I would work on building a team. Um, and when I say team, I don't mean a team of rappers. I don't mean a team of yes men. I mean a team, somebody is going to take your picture. Somebody is going to shoot the videos whenever, whenever you go out. That feels comfortable and this is what they want to do. Like, they're not just doing it for you. They're doing it to excel their goal as well. Um, find a producer. Find a manager. Find a, a, um, a promoter. Find a team, first of all. Second of all, my second uh, piece of advice that I would give that I didn't live by, don't think you're the shit. Don't be full of yourself. I come from, ugh, I come from a small city. Um, I was the rapper in high school. I was a football player in high school. I was in the paper. I made the paper to where they were talking about my music in high school. So I had this fucking King's disease to where it was like, I'm not trying to work with you. I'm trying to murder you on every track. And I think when you go about it with that type of mind state, you start blocking blessings. If I think I'm better than Mimics and I don't want to work with Mimics because I feel I'm better than him, then how are me and Mimics going to broaden our, our listeners? How am I going to build with him and have him take some of my listeners and I take some of his listeners and we just keep building. And I think right. a lot of people have that problem in the industry to where it's like, nah, I'm going to do my thing and I'm not going to worry about them. And that's that would kind of hurt me. Because if I would have been working with so many people that wanted to work with me and not thinking I was the shit all the time, I feel I would have been further in my horizon. Oh, so you're saying that you accidentally made that mistake by saying that you think you were better than other artists and you didn't want to feature with them. Not only uh, feature, I just... I just I was caught up in myself. Like I was caught up okay. like on throwing shows. Like I've done shows on Sunset. I've opened for Kendrick Lamar on Sunset Boulevard. I was doing things that I felt accomplished that I felt that I was better than others. But that's the wrong mind state to have because you're gonna keep yourself in that same box. You can't go any further in any industry without getting to know more people. Oh, okay. No, I I one hundred percent agree. I think uh, I think the chat agrees with you, Jay Jimerson. He's saying so true. Uh, uh, trust the shooter. He's giving you bullseyes. That's his favorite emoji. Uh, they're saying damn good advice. No, that's that is. I I definitely agree with you. And I I do I do. I am sorry that you were you were in that mindset at the time because your music is good and I feel like it could have been platformed and it could have gotten platinum records, golden records. You could have been on the billboards. Uh, but um, so where do you think that your music is going to go today? But don't answer that yet. That's a strong question. With you knowing what you know now and after 17 years, we're going to play your next song. Okay. With you knowing now, 
after 17 years, do you think that you still have a chance in to try to push your music into, let's just say, being played on your ro- your local radio station without you paying for it? So you understand the question? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So everybody, you are listening to Mimics Radio. We are talking hip hop news with Dro Boy. We are listening to Dro Boy. This man has been working 17 years and humping his ass, and he has made some fine ass music. Y'all are about to hear it right now. I know I'm a grown ass man. This is Dro Boy C A Crazy Girls featuring Slim95 on Mimics Radio. <laughs> Body so crazy, girl. You should work your crazy girls. I'll fuck you, crazy girls. I love me, my crazy girls. Your body so crazy, girl. You should work your crazy girls. I'll fuck you, crazy girls. I love me, my crazy girls. Pussy bomb if they crazy. You know that pussy bomb if they crazy. I love my crazy girls. I'll fuck you, crazy girls. Your body so crazy, girl. Boobies are bigger, booty is bigger Ever thought about being a stripper? I know they would tip ya You can make figures because of your figure If you could bounce it, if you could twerk it Don't make announcements, don't get dispersed Slid this to DJ Wavy Shout out to all my guys in the committee Bounce that ass, shake them titties Shouldn't be here if you ain't spending. Better throw some bugs and make it rain. We ain't here for fun, we tryna get paid. She make me wanna come, I can't complain. Tonight it's going up, this is insane. Your body so crazy, girl. You should work it. Crazy girls, I'll fuck you crazy girl. I love me my crazy girls. Your body so crazy girl. You should work your crazy girls. I'll fuck you crazy girl. I love me my crazy girl. Pussy bomb if they crazy. You know that pussy bomb if they crazy. I love my crazy girls. I'll fuck you crazy girl. Your body so crazy girl. You should work your crazy girl. Crazy girls, you know, I love me some crazy girls. Yeah. We run it up crazy girl, yeah. Whatever's gonna pay the bills. AOD crazy girls, XS crazy girls, they jump through crazy girls. I love all my crazy girls. Working like you deserve it, baby. Work it, you gotta earn it, baby. I'm a thug girl, now you know I'm playing. I'm a thug girl, now you know I'm playing. All night to the weekend, all week to the weekend. And the money don't sleep on the weekend. I'll fuck you crazy girl Your body's so crazy girl You should work it crazy girl Hey, uh, someone just cash tapped uh, some money for, for a question They have a question for you Gotcha Someone in the comments um, What, let me, let me scroll back down What what was your most difficult record to make and how was the payoff? Um I don't I don't really think I don't think the payoff I don't, I didn't have a payoff. Let's just say that. My payoff was me performing it and selling the tickets to go do it. Um okay. my most difficult record to make 
don't know. Like, I made like probably like, have five. you have you I think I think the question would be pertaining to like are you in the studio <clears throat> with your team that you were talking about? Are you in the studio and you just like go completely uh mind fuck? Like you can't think of anything, but like you know, you, oh. you're paying for the studio time. It's time to get done. Like that would be a difficult record. Like uh, or okay. or it could be emotional. Was there a record that you made that was too emotional? Just like your most difficult record, and we understand oh. the payoff. Some some musicians don't have a payoff. But listen, even views are payoffs. Okay, I think my most difficult record to make was um, I was I was seventeen, and um, we got um. Long story short, me and four other people five other people got into a car accident and um, the car flipped and ran into a telephone pole and my homie died on impact. And um, mm. this was on a Friday, I want to say. And I remember I woke up in the car, I had to bear crawl out the car and then like the car was tarnished, but I didn't have a scratch on me and just, uh, uh I remember looking at the sky that I ain't telling my boy, like, yo, I can't cry no more. You know what I mean? I cried all the tears that I could fucking do. Like, you know, we we're names in the city. I can't cry no more. And I think once I wrote that record, it was a record to the song. Um, I could feel it in the air. And um, I think that was the most difficult thing. Like, I remember writing a line that really hit home with me. It said, uh, you going now, we hurt. Because um, I, I said something about because I ain't know how I'm supposed to feel with you being on a t-shirt. And I think that was one of the hardest records to write because it was just like being so, um, just being so careless with my emotions and letting people know how I felt. You know, I okay. think those are some of the hardest records to make when you're actually going something, going through something you might be hurting about or, or, or might be embarrassed about, but those are some of the strongest records that people can make, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. I definitely, I think, uh, I think I would definitely stand with you on that. When my, when my grandfather uh, passed away, he was my biggest inspiration for music. Um, I actually have his first guitar that he ever bought. This thing is over sixty years old. I finally got around to being able to pull myself together and uh, frame it. I bought a box for it, a glass box and a wooden box. And I finally, it's framed. It's in my room. Um, I just purchased today, actually, a new commercial studio space. that, And it will be the first thing that people see when they walk in. So I definitely understand um, trying to write songs because I did a song about him. And like, I, I pretty much, I cried through uh, over half of the song. And I had to pull myself together just to try to continue to record because it was a song I really wanted to put out. Uh, so I definitely understand that. And I would like to say, Ebony, thank you for the question. And I I really do uh, respect you, Joe Boy, for giving such personal stories in your interview. Um, you should definitely uh, tell more stories and give more stories. And we understand that you have a podcast on your casual YouTube. Uh, what is Wednesday for? Wednesday is way back Wednesday. So if you click on that song, you, you'd probably be really fucking surprised. Uh, I made that song when I was about 16, 17, but the hook consists of like, if you if you believe that I'm cheating, then why the fuck you ain't leaving? Right. And, uh, so, and and the song is called Way Back When? Yeah, it's the one with the, uh, it's the one with the football stuff. Okay, let me, let me look and see, because I was going almost in order. Is it? Oh, with oh, okay, okay. No, no, you're good. You're good. It's called Way Back Wednesday. Yeah, uh, Way see. Back Wednesday with that football. You, you scroll too far. Go back up. It's Which like a newspaper article. Because that's the actual newspaper article that I was in where they were talking about it. That one. Oh, that's a song. Oh, yeah, that's right. I listened to that song. I don't know why I got I got stupid there for a second. I definitely listened to that song. That was a good one. Um, that is my shit. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ebony said, thank you, Trust, for the questions. What? Uh, let me see if did Trust ask a question? I'm just, hey, Jimerson just asked to see. Question. I don't want to. Or Trust did ask that question. Trust asked that question, I believe. 
about the. What uh, is that trust? I'm sorry. I thought that I yeah. thought that was Ebony. I said, "Oh, Ebony must have just like um." Oh, I see what she did. That's you okay? No, because she's definitely Ebony hey, is definitely. Hey, on top radio of it. this thing. Hey, playing a. Radio. Oh, he's on on the way to the airport. Why are you? I thought he was only like two hours away from you. You going because he's going to Oakland. Today. Oh, because he was only like two hours away. What you what you going to the damn airport for? Drive. That nigga better get hyped. That nigga about to go on a thirty minute flight. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's gonna take him longer to get on the airplane than it will for him to get there. For real, for real. Shout out my man DJ Show, man. DJ Show actually inspired me to do a lot of my. Uh, <laughs> but no, uh, by trust, seen it known. I did not see it the first time. Uh, we are actually gonna listen to that song that you just dropped, or that you just mentioned, the Wednesday oh, yeah, song. Yeah. Welcome to, uh, this is Mimics Radio. If you are just tuning in, we are talking hip-hop news with the one, the only, the Drove Boy, C.A. Devin, the realtor. Uh, he's much more than that, and you're about to find out in this song right now. Go subscribe. No, hold on. Stop. No, stop. I had to start over. I swear to God, I only respect you, try to test you, baby, if you Otherwise, do me special, I'll keep your nights blessed for with me Cause when I think of the wife that's in my life, I only see And if you believe that I'm cheating, then why the fuck you ain't leaving? The way I see it, you believe it, then give me a reason We go through this shit every season, we don't need it if you feel that I'm creeping, how come I'm with you when I'm sleeping? I wanna be with you, so make it look like Look shorty, you know my style, you will stay with a smile I can lay you down and then stay around the whole town No, we fucking around, it's no secret But you still listen to rumors about Jean Who the fuck you believe in? I don't even know the chicks They say who conceded, who believe it? So now understand why you do get teated I ain't got no reason to do some creeping It's not cute to constantly accuse me of doing these groupies Cause I'm a cutie, you get jewelry Pictures all time in a frame You can talk to me, call me any time of the day I stay cracking you up like I'm supplying you, yay Asking in the interview, no denying my thing My wish, I could fly you away But you believe it, that I'm cheating is the sight of my stay If you believe that I'm cheating Then why the fuck you ain't leaving The way I see it, you believe it Then give me a reason We go through this shit every season We don't need it if you feel that I'm creeping, how come I'm with you when I'm sleeping? I wanna be with you, so make it look like Stop searching through my pants, trying to find a number Thinking with my homegirls, I'm just trying to fuck her Stop going through my contacts, looking for a new name They call, I don't call back, I know how my broad acts Stop acting hard, cause you ain't that tough Stop mad dogging girls that only give me hugs I mean, shorty, I respect it but don't expect it to happen every second Only girls that I messed with My feel safe in your place Ain't gotta worry about girls taking your place When I look at you, I don't see a date in the waist I see us getting married, you getting cake in your face Don't make the mistake of pushing me away Because your girls say that you was getting played But hey, you can believe it if you want to But that decision may come back to haunt you if you believe that I'm cheating, then why the fuck you ain't leaving? The way I see it, you believe it, then give me a reason. We go through this shit every season, we don't need it. If you feel that I'm creeping, how come I'm with you when I'm sleeping? I wanna be with you, so make it look like. I swear to God, I only disrespect you, try to test you, baby, if yeah. Otherwise, do me special. I'll keep your nights blessed for you. Cause when I think of a wife that's in my life, I only see. Okay, okay. I like that. That was good. 
17, man. 17. You wrote that when you were 17. Uh, I'm not trying to make it sound bad or whatever, but how long ago was that? I wrote that in 2006. 2006. You said that you were what, 30? Yeah, I'm 33. 33. Oh, you were 30 because I'm I'm 27. You know, we're getting up there in age. Um, Trying to get past this Jesus year, make it past Jesus year, and then I know I'll. When Jesus was <laughs> Away at 33, I was like, oh. You gotta got make it past that crucifixion, man. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Hey, so I have a comment uh from my girl. She texted me because um she understands that I was making a diss track about the game, which has some really awesome mm -hmm. lyrics in it, by the way, which is gonna come out probably in the next two weeks. So, so her comment, which is also based on, upon our conversation about this uh new the game having his diss track. This is something I didn't even know. I thought that I was an Eminem fan, but I guess I'm not because I did not know about this. She said, well, I support you in this lyric. She said, I do like Eminem's music, but not him as a person. He made an entire song about black women. My girlfriend is black. And it was disrespectful. He called black girls dumb and said we were gold diggers. He also used the N word with a hard E-R. What song was that? But no, that that was her opinion based on that. Did he? He did. Uh, so what, you know what? In in, in, so in the games, in the games, no, actual no. song, he mentioned about the white guy being able to, to use the N word. So go ahead and elaborate about that. I've never heard that song. That song was put out, I think, as a joke back when he was still working with D12, back when he was still working with uh, Royce the Five Nine. Who are all black okay people. um that song really only came out when eminem was successful to do what to try to tarnish uh, the success that he has okay um that that record is never heard unless you go to youtube and you type in eminem saying nigger and calling black girls nappy headed dre wouldn't have fucking worked with him if that was the case that you know what that is a good point you know because saying? Dr. Dre did come from the hard streets of yeah okay like he comes from Detroit yeah. like let's 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 be real about that like it everybody's gonna come at Eminem because he's so successful that's the reason why Game came at Eminem that's why Haley even put up the post like yo people have to come in my dad to feel rational and to feel relevant that's all right it is. right that's all it and is you know. You know, one mention that my my dad um, my dad mentioned because he he hates rap music. He hates anything to do like he can't understand it. Like, and my dad, he's a he's a military veteran. He prefers like that that uh, I, I want to say like that slow rock or that fast oh. country, something that he can you know, I guess go kill Afghans to yeah. whatever he whatever floats his boat. But um, like he even mentioned, he said if you look at Eminem and you look at these other rappers, don't look at him as a person. Look, or as his music, look at him as a person, look at him as he came from his mom was a drug addict. And that is, that is, no, we're definitely not excusing him for that. Oh, hold on, hold that on, hold on. Absolutely. No, on. no, 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 no. no, no. I, I gotta, I gotta clarify this, especially being half black and half white. Okay. Okay. El, I hear you. I hear you. You feel me? One, it was some bull, it was a bullshit record. It wasn't even a real record to be honest with you, but in in same hindsight, uh, let's 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 be real. How many of these new rappers are calling white people crackers, or or doing things like that? Like we can't play racism to one side. Like it's, it's okay. really racism all the way around. You feel me? And I'm not saying that it's right and it's wrong, but yeah, Justin Bieber has got caught saying nigga too, and there's still it, it it didn't do anything for him. I'm just saying you got to know what industry that you're playing in. You know what I'm saying? The Migos right. have said, or or Ti, a lot of you South rappers have said cracker, and 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 to be honest with you, if we look at it, the white people in the fucking offices are like, put that shit out. Right. So but here's here's my opinion on that one, and that is a, a good opinion. I think Ebony, she gave some blessing hands, and she gave oh, like yeah. you know what white hands, uh, whatever those emojis are. But in my opinion, are if you are, let's just say that you are an influencer, and that's what all of these actors, actresses, rappers, singers, they are influencers of the main society. They create the main society. 
what I'm saying is it should not be justified. There is a fine line. There should be a fine line because you are an influencer. You can say whatever you want to in a song, but some of those songs don't need to be released. I know a lot of rappers and a lot of artists who have 100 for 100 songs like here in a hard drive that they have not released and they're not going to release those songs. Those songs were for fun. Those songs were for their buddies. Like they're just joking around. And I feel like Eminem, but that song that I've not heard yet, and I don't want to listen to it. He, he should have put that song in that hard drive. Like this is our fuck around okay, song with Dr. Like Dre. I Go have ahead. a song in, in, in one of my, in my iTunes right now. That's called white boys to where mm -hmm. we did the, uh, she moved her body like a snake mom. But we were like, we're gonna do it like white boy. Toya, toy. Or it was Toya, Toya, Toya. But it was a joke, like you said. Now, mine isn't going as far as saying blatant racist things about white people. But and that's I okay, though. What you're saying. But that's you know okay. Like, if you're making fun of white people, that's okay. But if you go off to say words, making fun about white yeah. people so rap like okay so if i come up in here and i just try to rap like kanye which i can't he's got a unique voice then that would be okay because i'm mimics my mimics name came from trying to remix other artists mm. uh and it it was you know hold on i want to read it's not okay and not sure why we are excusing it here but to each is no no we're definitely not excusing yeah. the n-word no, no. no we no no there's there is ebony uh 100 agree yeah. there is a fine line and artists should definitely take that uh if they want to do those songs with their buddies and and they're joking about it then they should not push that out to the media where everybody can hear it that's not something that society needs today like that should stay between you and your friends your friends with dr dre that's probably one of the greatest friends that you can get. I mean, that's fine. You, you're friends with Ice Cube, cool. But you cannot, as a white man, especially, especially with the history of America, you cannot, as a white man, say the N word openly I agree with that. I agree or at that. all. I, me personally, I would never say it at all, at all. Like I've been super drunk on on Plan A Radio, and I'm hanging out with a whole bunch of black people. You think I'm gonna say that word? Yeah. Fuck no. That's just disrespectful because of the history of America. Do I condone Eminem for saying that? Absolutely not. Yeah. No, absolutely. Ebony, I wish you were in here to say your opinion. Ebony's no, opinion no, matters no. most to me than she, anything. She ain't got her hair done. She's working on that macaroni I taught her to work on. That's what <laughs> no, um, she got to go get that wig back from Michael Jackson. No, um, no, no. It was just, um, I, I agree with her, and I want to apologize to anybody I might offend it, but at the end of the day, it's just like, yo, you either gonna care about it or you're not gonna care about it. Put it like that. Like, do we look at Luther Vandross to take away from him from all these songs that he, and, and I'm saying this is this is not the same context. Nigga and, and being gay is not the same context or saying the word nigga, but we can't take away from everything that Luther Vandross did because he's gay and he was singing to women. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I definitely understand Ebony's standpoint, but I, I do believe that there are certain things that are made to tarnish you in this industry. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, bro, you can't even I, I be a think, successful black artist unless you talking niggerish shit. <laughs> well, no, well, I did. I listen. I one hundred percent agree with you. Five years ago, until I met, um, so I always thought. And don't get me wrong, special forces, special forces military. I grew up around military. Well, every special forces person that I met was white. They were all white. So I was like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, beat them up, whatever. I met one guy, and then uh, he was Air Force. He was a paratrooper, which is pretty much special forces on top of special forces. And this guy was as black as all could get out. And I was doing some work for him. And he was telling me some stories. And I told him, and I came out openly, and I told him, I said, honestly, I never even pictured a black person being special forces. And I think that's because the way that I grew up was I was always around the white special forces. He said, no, no, no. He said, it's not even a race thing. He said, it's just, I did a lot more than they did with the paratrooper. He said, I went through more training than they did. Uh, yeah, so a paratrooper, a paratrooper, just for the viewers and everything, a paratrooper is the special forces that go and save and rescue the special forces. 
So let's just say a Navy SEAL gets caught and they're trapped and they're gunned down. They call in a paratrooper. Part of his training was to be dumped out in the ocean with, uh, he did have a working parachute. He said, but when you get down there, you, you land in the water. Your raft has multiple holes in it. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, you're in the middle of the ocean. You're, you, you, are, you are at least 100 knots away from land. You're in the middle of the ocean. Your raft has holes in it. You have to figure out how to get it out. And he was talking to me about how it's a mind game. And then he also mentioned about the race thing because he had mil- multiple apartments. And he was talking about how a lot of the white people that he had renting there just completely dashed his place. So I don't think it should be a, a race thing anymore. You know what I mean? We're, you know, uh, I'm going off of, I'm going off of all of the the energy of like the race and and how. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's just a. I think it's a difficult thing to talk about because I think it stems it more in, in in music. You know what I mean? It's based on history. It's based on the way we are brought up in our um, in in the things way we perceive certain things but i do want to say to ebony I, i'm i'm glad that you you said what you said um i don't think any i i do agree with you i don't think it makes it okay but i do feel that 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 thing went was tarnished you know what i'm saying like it was to tarnish his name right minute, um, i gotta get out of here man i appreciate okay. you bro I, I i really do man um we gotta pick this up another time no 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 not at all ebony i i, I have to go get my son actually so I love you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to tune in in the car, try to, but I won't be able to listen. Mimics, you're a blessing, brother. Let's keep working. Let's keep doing our thing. Thank you, Emony. 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 <laughs> Ebony. Thank you, Trust the Shooter. Thank you, Jay Jemerson. Thank you for everybody that tuned in and everybody that's going to tune in after this and see this on the repeat. I love y'all, man. And um, yeah, thank you, Mimics. Uh- Joe boy. Hey, thank you for the interview. Thank you for coming up in here, talking your knowledge, talking your, your aspects, giving us your, your definite opinion. We know you got to go pick up your son. Um, Ebony, you should definitely jump in here. Well, jump uh, in, man. Take my place. So we can, that person. So we can talk some more, some more hip hop news. Uh, yeah, that conversation did go a little bit sideways in there, in there, because we're talking about, uh, whether or not do we, you know, do we accept like that, that part of the, of the game of the white man saying the n-word and it kind of got into a little bit of race there no that's not what this radio show is about we're not talking about race we are all about everybody we're all about no, love we're, about we're not gonna say that we're not gonna say that it didn't go left it went real it just went on some real right. conversation i think some people might have not been ready they were listening for the music so but it, it everybody is all in the same bro we all love each other man it, it's no love loss or anything like that so don't don't even come in here in the comments and think it went left it went real drill boy you are a real one we are definitely going to have you back for an interview man i appreciate you you are Thank awesome you um Thank everybody you is his link is definitely 100 in the description you should go and follow because he does have good music and he also does a vlog every day. He has a different title for his every single day and it's awesome. I enjoy it. Y'all should definitely jump in. Um, but uh, the, uh, the viewers and the commenters, if you are going to stay, I'm just going to play some independent artists. Uh, Joe Boy, thank you for being 100. Thank you.